Okay, dear friends, whoever are here would like to start, um, we will try to be punctual, even though I'm uh, talking to you from Israel, and in Israel you don't punctual usually. And my name is Shimon Kutnovsky Liak, I'm the rabbi and the chairman for the Jewish community of Yurmala, or Yurmala, in Latvia. And as I didn't speak for a while in English, I didn't teach me English for a while, so if I have some uh, mistakes or, or is, if there is anything that is not clear enough, please let me know. And also, personally, I love to see whoever I talk with. So if you have a camera and you are in a respected place and so on, so of course you can turn on the camera. I would love to see your, uh, your, fa your, your lovely faces. And... It's such a great honor to, to be part of this amazing project of the CAR, of the Conference of European Rabbis. It's so important to, to, to do what we're doing today, that parallel to us, you have also classrooms in Russian, in, 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 in Spanish, in Hebrew, and so on. And today, my question to you, I'm not going to be, uh, I'm not even, I will not even try uh, to go into the high, big shoes of uh, uh, Rav Bag. I'm not such a Gaon, I'm not such a Talmid Chacham to talk about, about such important issues. And therefore, with your permission, I would like to go and discuss a little bit different question. And usually, when we're talking about the Torah, and here we are going to celebrate receiving the Torah, it's the holiday of Shavuot. And usually our question is, do we need the Torah? Who needs the Torah? Is the Torah still relevant to us or not? So whoever is keeping a religious uh, uh, lifestyle, so he, was, he or she will say, yes, sure, we need the Torah. But others might say no. And here tonight, I would like to ask you a different question. Why the Torah needs us? And it should be uh, the, 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 the true question to us. And I will try to show you why this question is important, but also to answer it and all of that in 20 minutes. So bear with me. Let's see, let's go together in this uh, short journey together. First of all, when we're talking about the Torah, about Judaism, about being a Israelite or a Jew, the question should be, what is the Torah? And what does it mean to be Jewish? Because usually when I will ask such a question, the answer I will get, the Torah is a book of religion, or it's a book of history, or traditions. And it's all nice answers, but are not quite the truth. The Torah is not a religious book. The Torah didn't came to teach us history. Yes, we use history to know and to, and to study but we didn't need the Torah to learn history or science and so on. So what is the Torah really? And the second question should be, what is Judaism? Is it a religious a religion or is it not? And to make a long story short, I would like to start with the understanding that the Torah is, the, uh, uh, is actually the words of God to us, to humankind. Meaning, God is talking and speaking to each and every one of us. You know, there is a, it's actually, it's not a joke, it's, it's a real story. In France, a few years back, they had a study. They asked two questions. The first question was, do you believe in God? And the second question was, do you believe that God has a son? Of course, the questions are uh, to, our, uh, to, to, to those who believe in, the, in Christianity. And believe it or not, but those who believe that God had a son are significantly, significantly uh, much more people that said that, yes, we believe that God have a son than people that said we believe in God. So in that sense, if we said the Torah, it's not a religious book. Judaism, it's also not a religion. Judaism, it's first of all, Understanding that me, I'm part of a lineage. Rabbi Zaks talk about it all the time. The idea that 
Abraham, Yitzchak, and Yaakov, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, starting a lineage that I'm part of, and hopefully I will continue through my children and grandchildren and so on till Mashiach comes. Yeah, by the way, it didn't come. It didn't come yet, if you didn't know. Yeah, we're still waiting and working on it that Mashiach will come. So, if Torah is not a religious book, and if Judaism is not a religion, why the Torah needs us, needs some people to, to, to receive it? You know, it's an interesting fact that at some point, in Zion, uh, the, the Zionists, you had the religious one, the Mizrahi, for example, were also my, the lineage of my teachers from the Rav Kook and so on. But you had, most of them are not religion, and, and, and not only not religion, but even anti, in such a way that they said, we need to change the paradigm, the, 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 the idea that a Jew is somebody that is uh, weak, and, and, and not capable, and, and so on. And how do we do that? We'll go out of the Torah. If the Torah is a religion, so we'll go out of it, and we'll show that the, the Jews need to go back to their homeland to create, uh, to create uh, their own government, to be strong, to have a powerful uh, army, and so on. Funny enough is that the, the ki children of those uh, patriots not only that are not, not really continuing the, the steps of the fathers, they're going back to some traditions. And therefore, for example, in Israel, even that most are not considered to be religious, they will keep or they will mention Pesach. It will be important for them that uh, their sons will be circumcised. They will light the candles of Hanukkah. They will come at least to some parts of Yom Kippur and so on. So, again, why do we need the Torah? I think there's a lot of uh, answers for that and many, many lessons about it. But why the Torah needs us? Let's see. First of all, if we say that the Torah, it's the word of God to us. So, we're saying basically that it's the, the whole truth. If it's the truth, it means it needs to be universal. It needs to be for everybody. As mathematics, for example, you cannot say that mathematics belongs to one nation and not to another. Make sense? Mathematics is for everybody, and it's true for everybody in the same way. So if I'm saying that the Torah is the truth, the Torah needs to be the same to everybody. And you know what? We're actually showing that this is, the, this is how it is. How? In Judaism, you don't, have, you don't have the need to go and convince by words or by the sword, that everybody needs to be Jews now. No. Torah can be true to all nations. Nobody needs to change himself in such a way that, oh, I need to be Jew in order to study Torah and in order to receive the Torah. No. It's what we call today Noachid or Bnei Noach. I can receive the truth of the Torah and still stay at the nation that I'm at, that I'm coming from. And if it's so, so why there is such a weird Midrash that says that before we receive the Torah, before God coming to us through Moses and giving us the Torah, so there is a Midrash that says that first of all, uh, God came with the Torah to one nation and tell them, would you like to receive my Torah? And they would say, oh, sounds good. What, what's written there? So, different rules and different ideas, and then, oh, but you said that we're not allowed to kill each other. No, no, not good for us. Give it to somebody else. Okay, so God take the Torah and come to the next nation, and then the next nation asking, so what's, what's written in the Torah? And again, God says different ideas and different um, rules that the Torah gives, and say, oh, oh, hold on. We're not allowed to steal from each other. No, we don't want to receive it. And so on and so forth. God going from one nation to another. And eventually nobody wants to receive the Torah. What God doing? Kafa har kegigit. It says. And we don't have a choice. God giving it to the nation of Israel. You, you want it or not? Nobody asks you. Here it is. 
and uh, move along. And the midra, the, the, this midrash is a little bit sad actually, because if we say that Torah is the truth and it's the word of God to us, how come different nations didn't want it? It doesn't make sense. It doesn't really make sense. And even harder than that, the midrashim, our sages, are saying that Torah was created before. The creation of the world. Not the Torah that we know today. If you go today to a synagogue, you open the scroll, you have written Torah. Not in such a way. But the, the essence of the Torah was created before God created this world. If so, how come Adam and Eve would not receive the Torah? How come? You say it's for all humanity? Here you go. Adam and Eve, they weren't Jews. They weren't, they, there wasn't a religion then. So give the Torah to Adam and Eve, and that's it, you're great. You're doing well, you're giving, you're giving, you're giving it to all humanity. And back to the Midrash that we, that, that, that we just mentioned, it's, again, it's so sad. Nobody wants to receive it, so eventually God coming and, 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 and twist your arm and tell it, no, you will take it. It's weird, it's weird. And this is what we're celebrating, really? So let's see a few answers about that, about why the Torah needs us, needs a nation. And, and when we said, oh, the chosen one, what does it really mean? What does it really mean? So I want to give three answers from different aspects of understanding the Torah. And I will actually start with the level of the study of Kabbalah. So the next idea and then the first answer we take mainly from the writings of the Ari, Rabbi Yitzchak Luri Ashkenazi. And you can find it in uh, different teachings that they're talking about it. From the point of view of Kabbalah, Adam and Eve are the sum of souls of humanity. Adam is the sum of all male and Eve, female. And through their physical action and, and, and communication and connection, and they have kids, so it's kind and heaven and then shed and then so on and so forth, those souls or those roots of souls starting to have a physical body and for different reasons. We're talking about it in different lessons that we have, thank God. Each soul, each root of a soul, have its own value and purpose in this world. And it says, the Ari says that there are 600,000 roots of souls, that their work in this world, their purpose in this world, it's the spiritual aspect for the whole humanity. Meaning, for example, you have many doctors. For example, my mother, she's a doctor, she is a dermatologist. So for some questions, she would be the most important doctor. But as you can see, I'm with glasses and sometimes I would need an eye doctor. And at that point, for those questions, the most important doctor for me would be the eye doctor and not my mother. Make sense? So in that sense, from all those roots of souls, that each roots have their own purpose in this world, 600,000 souls or roots of souls had the, the, the responsibility to reveal God in this world and reveal how to connect with God for everybody else. Doctor for this specific question. And the first time that those souls are uh, coming to realizations, it's the, um, it's the moment before the flood. It's the generation of the flood. But they are messing up. They're not doing their job. They're actually doing the opposite of what they're supposed to do. And therefore, flood comes and eliminate their bodies. But the souls are internal. And therefore, Ari said, they will come again. And next time those souls coming, it's already the generation of the Babylon uh, uh, Tower. They're supposed to do something 
very, very specific, but they're doing it wrong. And again, coming out and will separate between them. Third time that those 600,000 souls are coming, they are coming through a specific family. Maybe you, maybe you know this family. It's the family of the last Hebrew man. Abraham, Yitzchak, and Yaakov, and his 12 sons. And this family of Jacob, the sons of Jacob, the sons of Israel, that are eventually would go to Egypt, would become slaves in Egypt, would stuck there for more than 200 years, and eventually would go out, out of Egypt, Exodus, and will be able to receive the Torah on Mount Sinai, not for them, for the entire world. So the first uh, part of answer, why the Torah needs the Jews or the, the nation of Israel, is that those, uh, this group of souls mess it up twice and need to go for the third time through a very specific family. As Rav Drukman, Alava Shalom, a huge rabbi that passed, the, passed this world this year. He used to say Abraham was the one who came to monotheism by himself. Monotheism that it's not logical actually. It's much more logical to believe in pantheon of, of gods. Because in this world, in this material world, you have a hierarchy, right? You don't go to your president. You go to some officials and then you go to your if you are in the state so then you go to your senator and so on. You, th there is hierarchy you don't go straight to, to, to the big boss right so pantheon of, of, of gods would make more sense to humankind to go by himself to transform himself to get into monotheism we needed, we needed to go through him especially this is how it says Rav Dukman. By the way, it's interesting that the Ben Ishchai would say that when we came out of Egypt, we didn't come out of Egypt to receive the Torah. We released ourselves from slavery in order to get back to the land of our ancestors, to the land of Avram, Yitzhak, and Yaakov, in their ancestors, and to create there our own kingdom. The Torah was a gift, was a bonus, was a surprise on the way in order to strengthen our connection with God and to realize and, and to bring to realization our our our, our, our path and, and, and our calling in this world. The Rambam would say something that I think very relevant to, to our question. Adam and Eve didn't receive the Torah because before we can receive the Torah, before we can receive the words of God, in order not to, not to use them in the wrong way, we need, first of all, to build the first level, which is Derech Eretz, which is ethics and moral. And this is what humankind did for 26 generations from Adam and Eve till Moses. It wasn't perfect. It's not today's morals, but also they didn't have the Torah before. But after 26 generations of working on themselves and having some morals, uh, moral ground, then finally we ready to, for, for the second level, for the second floor of our building. And, and then we can receive the Torah. And what would be more appropriate than the nation that the, for the first time could show that we can get out of slavery and change the rules of nature as humankind knew them back then. Right? Frank, Frank Sinatra let my people go. I mean, it, it was for the first time in history. It was a revolution. So even from the perspective of moral and ethics, it just works. And eventually, the third answer would be from the book of Kuzari, Rabbi Uda Levi, which is, he lived a little bit after the Rambam. And he says that the Torah, yes, it is universal truth. 
and therefore it need to be given particularly to someone because if I have goods and I just give it to everybody nobody receives it you want that some that everybody will receive it you give it particularly you, you need to have the first one to receive it to understand it to digest it and there and from there to give it uh, on a more broad spectrum because the fact that I, that somebody gave me something it doesn't mean that I received it if I will come to my uh, uh, to my youngest son to Yohanan is only one year old and I will give him the keys to a new brand car was it a giving maybe I gave him something but did my son be uh, was able to receive what I gave him no no if now a scientist will come and will teach my kids mathematics he can give them a lot but they are not ready to receive it and therefore first of all we needed to go through so many generations or as they are said uh, 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 reincarnations in order to eventually we'll be able to receive what what God what God gives us and when God gives it you need to give it to particular person or a nation in order that it will go eventually to everybody else and we see as today all monotheism all monotheism religions are based on the Torah, but not only on the Torah. They are based on receiving the Torah, the Torah on Mount Sinai. Because all religions, or you believe that there is a prophet or there is a person that God talks to them, and this is the truth, or not. And this is your individual question, to believe or not to believe. I can't, there are no proof. The only time when God talks, not to individual, but the whole nation, it's on the Mount Sinai. And we can see it in the Torah. Before Mount Sinai, the Israelites, they don't believe in Moses. What do I mean? They believe that he's their leader. He's the leader that helps them to, to get out of Egypt. He's a national leader. He's a political leader. But they don't believe, they don't perceive him as a prophet. When they willing to perceive him as a prophet only at this at this moment at this moment of receiving the Torah on Mount Sinai when it says in the Torah they believed in God and believe in his servant in Moses only this moment so this moment is actually the key to all other religion that if you ask them can you show me that God talked to us they said yes on Mount, on Mount Sinai therefore for the nation of Israel, you do, it's the question that, that does God exist or not is irrelevant. Why? Because he talked to us. Therefore, you can say I believe, you can say you don't believe, but it doesn't matter because he spoke with you, with each and every one of us. And therefore, if we say now, why the Torah needs us, for all those reasons to continue the thought of creation, and therefore, this coming Wednesday, uh, Thursday night, Friday, and, and those of us in diaspora, also Saturday, it's a question for us, and, 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 and such a beautiful question for us. Do we willing to receive it willingly? And do we understand why we should receive it? And if it's the words of God to each and every one of us, maybe we should find the time to study, to read again, to ask questions and to understand that by us studying, understanding more, having more questions, receiving answers and practice it, we'll be able truly to get to the destination that we came, uh, that, that, that we were born to, uh, to this world to, to, to get there. And by, and, and by that really to get to what we can call a true Tikkun Olam, by doing the Tikkun, doing the a correction in my personal life through the Torah and through me through that to the entire world thank you so much for being with me and uh, uh, I guess we have five minutes for questions before um, the Honorable Rabbi will continue the next session so I would love to hear you thank you
If there are any qu questions or comments, please, I would love to hear it or to read. <laughs> Okay, so if there are no questions or or, um, or you want to, add, to ask after and not in front of others, so please feel free to, uh, to write or call. And if, uh, if we finished here, so again, thank you so much for your time. I really appreciate it. I appreciate for you, all of you being here with me in this uh, lovely evening and Chodesh Tov to everyone. And uh, soon enough, uh, uh, soon enough, we'll start the, the next session. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Uh, Shimon, are you stay, stay here? Um, I can stay for a bit, but then I need to go to help with the kids. So. <laughs> yes. Please wait a few more minutes. If someone wants to ask some question. Sure, so I can anyway. stay, sure. I see Rav Roberts already with us. Yes. So, Rav Roberts, if you are ready, oh, you can op open also the mic. Thank you very much. Shalom uvracha, Chodesh Tov, Reb Shimon. I'm not sure that we have met, and I only caught the last few minutes of uh, what sounded like an amazing and very thought-provoking shiur. Um, thank you so much, and I want thank to you. thank the C the CER for the opportunity. Uh, good evening and Chodesh Tov from Berlin. And I chose a, deliberately chose quite a provocative title, um, anti-Semitism or the Jewish conspiracy theory. You, you know, and what does this have to do with Shavuot? You know, we all hear this uh, anti-Semitic uh, 